Well, no, I didn't know. Where was I going to know this from? He like, I mean, like, you ain't, you ain't learn this in school. Like, your parents didn't teach you. I mean, you're a new hire. Did HR not teach you? I'm like, nobody has ever said anything like this. Like, I thought 401ks, and I thought this was, I didn't know what it was. So from that aspect, I started, my, my eyes started opening more to about ways to, to build wealth and, and saving and, and things of that sort. But the, the, the big picture was that if I felt like I was a pre pretty bright person that made it out of a, a tough city, um, then imagine the people who weren't, didn't feel like they were as bright or weren't as educated. And like, if I didn't know this, then it has to be a whole another world of kids uh, and even adults that don't know. So, you know, it took me a little while, but I'll say, you know, about two years later, I said, you know, why don't I start an organization about teaching young adults about things that I know now that I wish I knew then and how much would my life have been different had I known these things. And Welcome to This Is Financial Intelligence, the podcast not about the glamour of money, but instead the vulnerable, and real conversations that we're all afraid to have. Brought to you by Money Club. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. I'm here with a very special guest. Uh, this is Chris Banks, the executive director of Thanksgiving, also the founder of it. He and I have been collaborating and working together for, what, three years now? At least. Dude, it's, it's flown by. Um, we got connected from actually one of our like social media interns at the time was like, yo, I found this website, this guy in Philly's doing some cool stuff, like kind of like what we're doing, we should, we should connect. And lo and behold, we're having this conversation. We've had many different conversations and dude, it's just such an honor to share some time with you today. No, nah, man, much respect. I remember I pulled up on you at your spot in Baltimore. I don't remember the name. What was the name? Or uh, no, where uh, was that? <laughs> dude, it's so long ago. Yeah. Um, I think we met it's at like, like a bagel, but yeah, it was like, like a big bagel spot though. Like an evergreen cafe. I think it was. That, that sounds about right. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yep. And here yeah. we are. Yeah, here we are. Three so, you know, the, the interesting part about our conversations that we've been having with young adults, you know, we both have been in the space of working with young adults to give them education around money is that I think we have to go first. Right. So we have to get educated enough to, to pass it down. So if we're going to have this conversation about, you know, building impact and diving into how we can make change in future generations, let's talk with how this started for, for you. So where did the idea come from to, to do this, to build a, a financial education platform and what started it? Yeah, so for me, um, I guess my story might be a little different than, than most. I didn't come from a financial background. Finances, I mean, clearly it's something that drives all of us, but most of us, myself included at the time, don't really know how to work it, how to make it work for you, building. We just know, you know, work at a job, retire at 65, then we could live life, right? Which and me and you, through our personal relationship, has talked like, that's not for us. Um, and it shouldn't be for others uh, unless that's what they want. Like, but most people feel like that's the only option. Yeah. That, that, that's how it is, you know, waiting for a big check or a big, whatever it is, um, or just waiting for retirement. So for me, and, and I'll try to make this quick in 2010, I had an internship at the mayor's office of Philadelphia uh, and I worked in the finance department. Uh, cause you know, as an intern, they just kind of put you wherever. At the time, I didn't necessarily know anything about finance or money, but one of the things that I was able to do, because at the cities, as you know, in Baltimore, on a local level, they focus on different things. So for me, at the time when it was kind of like the new, it was, gentrification was kind of just starting from, from, from what I saw, at least in Philly, you know, from at that time being just 20 something, young 20 something years old, um, and so where I was at in the mayor's office, the, depart the budget department or the finance department, whatever it is, my task was talking about like vacant lots and vacant homes and how that has an effect on communities throughout the city. And me being from uh, an urban community, I noticed quickly and I was able to 
rapidly tell them like, oh, well, this neighborhood, this happens in here. But if you're saying that the vacancy does, the, I can see why all of these things are related and when people start buying things up and building them up and so forth. So that was like my first crack. And I started to understand the financial impact of so many things that government does and of housing, real estate and things of that sort. Uh, from then I went to DC and I uh, got, I say two government jobs that were in the finance department. And I say, you know, to, to fast forward it a little bit. So I think that when we think about finance, we think that you have to be a mathematician. We think that you have to be able, you know, to break down all these derivatives of one. <laughs> once, um, and, you know, really in this day and age, and clearly then, if you can understand even Excel sheets, like, you know, like know, know how to manipulate that, like you can make a lot of money in this world, you know, six figure salaries and so forth. Um, so I started to learn that on the go. But one of the major things was that I remember talking to a coworker at the time, that was probably in 2000, maybe 14 or so. And we were talking about the 401k and he was like, well, you know, the company is matching and are you putting this in? And I was like, well, no, they, I don't really understand that. I just want, give me all the money that I can. You know, I just want the most money in my check. And so he started like laying out things about how, if you did this and then by the time that you're this age, this will be a million dollars or two million, however much we started getting into numbers. And so now I like, I like start whispering a little bit, you know? So I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So all I have to do is this. Now, I'm thinking it's a loophole, you know? And he's like, why, why are you whispering? Like, you didn't notice? Like, well, no, I didn't know. Where was I going to notice from? He's like, I mean, like, you didn't, you didn't learn this in school. Like your parents didn't teach you. I mean, your new hire, the HR and I teach you. I'm like, nobody has ever said anything like this. Like I thought 401ks and I thought this was, I didn't know what it was. So from that aspect, I started, my, my eyes started opening more to about ways to, to build wealth and, and saving and, and things of that sort. But the, the, the big picture was that if I felt like I was a pre pretty bright person that made it out of a, a tough city, um, then imagine the people who, weren't didn't feel like they were as bright or weren't as educated and like if I didn't notice then it has to be a whole another world of kids uh, and, and even adults that don't know so you know it took me a little while but I'll say you know about two years later I said you know why don't I start an organization about teaching young adults about things that I know now that I wish I knew then and how much would my life have been different had I known these things and, you know, we hit the ground pretty, pretty good and kind of just been moving upward and onward ever since. So one, if I could high five you, I would, I'm not sure if we're allowed to high five people during Corona time, still social, but... distancing. Still <laughs> social distancing, <laughs> but dude, it's, it's awesome to hear this story specifically because what seems to exist uh, alongside the retirement conversation is I'll make my impact later. I'll mm -hmm. do it when I get there. I'll do it when I make it. I'll do it, you know, at some point in the future. And, and we all know that some days quickly become one days, quickly become no days. Right. And, you know, to, to highlight some of this that you mentioned, you know, listening to vacant lot conversations, listening to what's happening in city hall, and then making the connection, listening to your friends, listening is a huge part of our objective as not only leaders for young adults, but I think when it comes to talking about money, there's this, there's this stubbornness that I experience where I'm like, I'm good, I'm good. And it's really neat to hear that a big piece of this was, hey, can I listen to some more? Yeah. So if there were, let's say we broke down the the biggest three things that you took away so may, maybe 401k is one of them 401k is a phenomenal tool for those that are employees mm -hmm. what, what would be some other really big ones that that stand out from from at that time that i that i learned wow we'll go anytime oh um well that um understanding that um even a salary it really doesn't mean much if you don't i guess like properly allocate or plan and organize your financing. Oh, yeah. One of the things I always say to kids is like, 
you can make $80 an hour or you can make $8 an hour, but it could all look the same if your financing and your budget isn't together. And so I think that's something that I always think about. You know, we certainly always fall in love with the, well, this guy's getting, you know, a hundred and whatever thousand a year, or she's only getting 50,000 per year and whatever, whatever it is, we fall in love with those numbers. And it's like, we know one through taxes and insurance and things like that. First of all, you know, you don't even see that, that amount of money, but it's like, even if you did, if you're not spending it right or making the right investments, um, it could, it, it could really, um, take you off of that path um, of, of which I guess the positive path that, that you thought that you were on by accepting those jobs. I love that. Yeah. Like the, the idea of allocation and organization is huge, you know, and I, I, I love those words more than budget. Yeah. Right. You know, budget, budget has kind of always been one of those dirty words that people are like, yeah. Oh, that means I just say no to a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I really like allocation and organization in, in the, in the process of, you know, I think when you start an organization or you start something philanthropic, right, with a mission behind it, you also learn about allocation and organization for impact. It's totally different, right? You think about dollars and cents in a very different way than, than you might normally. So what were some lessons from, from building Banks Giving Up and, and trying to figure out where we put the dollars, how do we get the dollars? All of those things. Well, it's funny that you say that because uh, again, when you when you're doing it from a philanthropic point of view, you look at like especially as nonprofits, like you're like, oh, I'm starting something. I'll be kindness in my heart. Everybody's gonna love this. This is just they just need somebody to do the work. And you'll notice that that's not it. Certainly, the work has to be done. A lot of times, you are doing the work that people aren't willing to do, but it's not everything's not free. You know, I think when we think of nonprofit, we think of free. And that certainly should be broken down. Um, that, that, that's a lesson all within itself. And I, and I plan on doing a lesson like that uh, eventually too, because again, definitely coming from minority communities, like a lot of times we're doing, we're starting these nonprofits because we're like, okay, this is how I would want something to happen. Uh, these are things that we know are needed in our community. So if I could get some government support and, you know, some friends that keep giving me donations, it'll be cool. One of the hurdles that you run, that you run into are like, especially for me, it was like, okay, if you want to have a location for it, for, for, for your nonprofit or something like people aren't giving you, you know, free real estate because you have a, a, a philanthropic effort. Like you still need to figure out different funding mechanisms to, to keep, to keep, to keep that going. Um, and so, so I think that was something that I learned early, right? Like I was like, oh, wait, wait, wait. Like, so like, you're, you're not giving me this room for free. Um, you know, you're not paying for this. Like there isn't a loan, even when it comes and I don't know how you guys did it. It might be a little different. Um, but even when it comes to like grants and stuff, a lot of the grants for nonprofits, you can't even get that until your third year uh, consecutive um, running your company. So like that is like a major, I would say, detractor that people don't know about because it's like, if I'm like searching for a thousand dollars in year one and I don't, cause I don't have it, how, how the hell am I going to get to year three, yep. <laughs> you know, yep. and, 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 some, and some of the guidelines and essays and questions, they're so strenuous and, and even hard, you know, and you're like, you know, I did all that just to get a $500 grant. Totally. So it's tough. There's a lot of things that, 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 that I've learned through it, but I think that, you know, you, you actually have to go through it to learn. Hopefully you are, you know, you're a part of the marathon that, you know, you'll, you'll be able to take some bumps and bruises and keep going because it'll certainly, you know, there'll be some things that you didn't plan for. Dude, it is such a marathon too. And I'm glad we're both runners. Yeah. Right. <laughs> We'd be in trouble if not. Yeah. You know, we, so we started as a nonprofit too, and, and it took, you know, a $500 grant could take, could take six hours. <laughs> and then once you get the grant, you've got to, then that's when the work begins, right? right. So that, now you've got some funding to go do the thing that you promised you would do. And then you've got the follow-up reporting on, this is what I did with that $500. And not only is that drop in the bucket so small, like, 
I remember the first five hundred dollars we got. That's yeah. how we started five hundred, and dude, we felt like we won the lottery. Yeah. And now five hundred doesn't it barely moves a dial, right? As you start to do more impact and work, five hundred might not get you a room reservation. Correct. So, you know, Correct. legit. <laughs> yeah. You know the. I also think the, the a piece of this conversation that would be really interesting to explore really quickly is the word free word free, especially in nonprofits is like, it's almost dangerous. And, and look, we learned the hard way. It sounds like, um, anyone in the nonprofit space probably will. But what we sensed was that when we gave something away for free, it wasn't taken seriously or because it was free, it was, it was mistreated in the long run, right? If you spend, you know, a thousand dollars on a conference, you know, a two day conference and you're like, dude, I'm going in for two days to learn a whole bunch. You generally want to extract a thousand dollars of value out of it. But when it's free, you might get up in the middle of it and be like, ah, same for me. I won't, I'm not looking for it. You know, have you, you experienced things like that too? Um, so I would say, so my program that we hold at Temple University that was monthly, and now we're going to try to move that to Zoom, um, as you know, it is free for students to come, um, at any time, no real strenuous sign up practices or anything like that. So oftentimes that is a thing that is like, you know, I tell people like sometimes like it could be, you know, on average, I guess 30, 40 kids show up. It could be a hundred kids that show up or it could be a raindrop outside and it could be five <laughs> kids that show up. <laughs> right. and now when something is free, you have that option. If those kids were spending their, or, or parents were spending their money on these things, that raindrop wouldn't stop them if their money was already spent or if they felt like, yo, I could, you know, if I don't go, we won't get the money or we won't get, you know, something like that. So certainly I think that it plays a big part and, and the draw, as well as uh, the, 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 the reach acting, I guess. But it's also like, how else do you get people involved? Because you also know that as a new company, people are very skeptical of giving their money to, to, to you. And that doesn't matter if it's people will question you if it's $500, they'll question you if it's $5. Well, where's the money going? What are you doing? Well, why, does the, why, why do the kids have to pay, you know? So... Uh, it's tough, man. So the only thing I think that what we're forced to do is always try to be innovative, always try to be relatable, and always try to make them know, like, listen, we're, we're, we're in this together, right? And, you know, I would really appreciate it. Um, but also making sure that when we are there, that we're making the kids' time or whoever, the client's time worthwhile, yep. you know? So now if they feel like it wasn't worth it, you know, it's going to be tough for you to get them to come back free or paid. Well said. And that's true for anything, right? I mean, if I go to a bad movie, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, dang, right. it's two hours of my time. <laughs> right, uh, right. I definitely, I mean, now movies are like three hours, but, you know, I, I feel that. And I also, I love the comment about we have to find different funding mechanisms. Mm -hmm. And the reason I love that, and I think we should explore it a little bit, whether you start an impact vehicle or you start a, a traditional go-for-profit business, Funding mechanisms are real. And I think the, the general perception of nonprofits is like uh, money, like people just throw you cash and people you know, like you just parade down the street, <laughs> you know, and you just are, are thrown thousands and thousands of dollars. And the drive that we have to make an impact is made bigger or more um, tangible by the dollars. Right. Mm -hmm. It means we can put more into programs. It means we can put more into resources and handouts and tools and, and development, but we've got to find those funding mechanisms. And it sounds like both you and I, through the beginnings of our organizations, we're basically funding, maybe not the organization, but we're funding our own time. Right. So we're working the moonlight nights. For me. And I think for you too, like it was, it was a little bit of both. Like, you know, like, like when pe I used to think that it was actually, um, I thought that it was more admirable to say like, Hey, you know, nobody's helped me with this. I've done all this through myself, 
But if you're not Mark Cuban, you know, like that's not admirable. Because, you know, because even in a business sense, people are like, wait, you spent your own money? You know, like, well, how, how long were you going to do that? Because that's not sustainable. Right. It's just, it's just not sustainable to just keep eating out, eating out, eating at, you know, your own, your own, your own bottom line and cost. So, and again, not that I had that much money to begin with anyway, but it was, you know, little by little, if I have something, I'll do this, I'll do that. And then, you know, once you started learning different ways, like, uh, but even now, you know, now it's, it's still certain times of struggle, you know, when you don't have a, uh, a dedicated grant writer on staff or, right. but though that could bring in a lot of money, those people cost money. I'm not sure what the rules are in, um, in, in Baltimore but I, or, or in Maryland, but I do know that in Pennsylvania, you can't like assign someone to my knowledge based on like a percentage. Correct. I can't be like, hey, you know, if you get this $10,000 grant, I'll give you $1,000 out of that. Like you can't right. do that. They have to, you know, already be set in place on, I guess, hourly or whatever that salary structure goes. So again, that's, that's like a big thing because now you have to have for however many months or times you have to have, you know, a certain amount of money allocated towards this person. Maybe they get you some big grants, maybe they don't, but you can't judge your decision to hire them based on that. Right. Um, so, you know, if, if it's not strictly from uh, them donating, you know, their grant writing expertise, that, 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 that's been a tough thing too. Yeah, dude, it's super tough. All right. There's a word that came out. Uh -oh. That is the magic word, man. So we're, we're it's, it's a good one. Um, it's, it's a beautiful topic to talk about. And what we're really diving into here is, you know, how we make impact and how we need to fund that. And this particular podcast is all about being super vulnerable and real about, you know, what's happening yeah. behind the scenes. And you said the, the word was admirable, right? Mm -hmm. And it was a misplaced admiration for, us to be like this, I don't know, I felt like in, in, in my own world, if I did it alone, then I was proving that, I don't know, that maybe I was worthy of, of being the leader, or, or maybe I was worthy of, of getting more funding another way. But it was a, a really messed up relationship with like, almost being a martyr, like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to my job, I'm gonna work a bunch of hours, that's where I'll get paid. And then I'll go to this other job that I work six hours a night and I won't get paid because, because I don't need that. Cause it's more admirable to do good and not right. get paid. And, and dude, I, I burnt out hard. Mm -hmm. So let's explore this a little bit. You know, if we were talking to former Chris, young Chris or somebody young, that's like, you know, I want to start a social venture. I want to do something mission oriented, but one, I don't know when to start and they've heard us say start now but what advice could we give them so that they don't have the same weird addiction to like you know doing doing hard work alone for the wrong reasons what what advice do you think we could share with them what advice would i share to a young person to tell them not to do, not to do, to, to do it. So, re, 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 yeah. <laughs> so like if, if someone was going to start a social venture mm -hmm. and they heard us earlier say, look, don't wait, start now. Right. But we were worried that they might go through the same admirable state of like, I'm going to do it alone. I'm going to do it the hardest way possible. What advice could we give them? All right. So another I think that's tough because I think that oftentimes when you get, if I was to tell them to wait until their money was right or something, or if they had a nice piece of ch a chunk of savings or whatever that is, I think people end up waiting forever, you know, or, or like I'll never have enough, you know, because as soon as I got to 10,000, my, my, my roof started leaking and, you know, or the basement flooded or, or, or whatever that is. So I, I, I still do believe that if it's in your mind, if it's even a thought, especially while you're young, to just start it, you know. One thing that I do know that I will say is a little different is that as a young adult, you're allowed the space to make more mistakes. Yep. And that's financially, that's in school, that's out of school, that's in relationships. Like people give you more 
room to grow and 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 they should and and they should so i always tell you know i think certainly like in a high school age right kids are just worried about being cool doing what's cool i'm like dude what's cool now isn't going to be cool in 10 years <laughs> right but like but what's going to be cool is that in 10 years if you're a ceo in 10 years you got a consistent cash flow and everyone else is doing the rat race trying to figure out what their passion is so if it's something that you think you like right now start it you yeah. know 14 15 16 17 and we see all the time um or at least more often than, than, than i used to that there are a lot of young entrepreneurs who are making you know more money than you and i off of idea off of off of just their fan base or you know social media off of you know video games whatever that is so i'm like yo whatever it like you know it's like we're at the point you know i think my uh you know my parents maybe yours too like I kind of grew up like we were, we probably felt like certain ideas were like stupid, right? Like, yo, you, you better not do something like that. Like that, you know what I mean? Now it's like, yo, you can make money. If, if money is your goal, you can make money off of doing anything that you want. Now the social impact side of it is also something I think you could jump out there with, you know, it's a millions, millions of organizations that are looking for new youthful ideas, you're looking for help, spirit, um, intern, in, in, always looking for internships, paid, unpaid, however that is. And I'm certainly the one that, you know, I'm not trying to benefit off of uh, unpaid labor, you know, so if there is a way that I could connect a young adult or uh, to something that's going to be lucrative for them in the now or, or after, I try to get them lined up with that. Definitely if it seems to be along with their goals that they've already voiced to me. Yeah, man. Uh I think it's really important to, to look at like what's, what's the objective in the long run. You know, we, we get a lot of um, interest from interns and, and I think having a social mission has been the reason, right? Mm -hmm. There's just an overwhelming amount of individuals that are like, look, I want to do something that matters. That's what I want. I want to be involved in something that's not just, can I get the mail and can I like push out these reports? Right. And what we've had to do, I think over and over, but we've done it consistently well is make sure that we ask what, where they're going to go and we connect that skill in. So instead of it being unpaid labor, it's really unpaid education. Mm. And, you know, as, as guys in education and, and making change through it, we can cover so much more ground than school can. No doubt. And that, that piece of starting is super critical and I'm all for, I think it sounds like you are too, all for get in, get your hands dirty, make the mistakes, burn it out, you know, while you're young, because eventually, like, we can't make the same kind of mistakes. It's too costly. And yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, and, and, and even when it comes from, you know, favors, like nobody's really trying to give grown men favors or women or grown women or grown women fa favors. Yep. Like, you know, once you reach a certain age and even a stature, people aren't trying to hear that you messed up. People, uh, people aren't trying to hear, you know, what happened to your life or that you got a kid. Like, it's like, yo, what, what are you doing? Yep. You know, are you doing it? Are you not? Are you going to make a way? Are you not? Right. Cause somebody will look you dead in the face and say, yeah, man, that's tough. Well, when, when you get it together, man, I'll be here. Give, give, <laughs> here. Reconnect, you, you know? So, um, that's something I always think about. I think another thing you said too, you know, like having more impact to schools, depending on how your structure is um, and, and with the expansion of charter schools and things like that, like if done right, we can start our own schools. Yep. Like, you know, and, and I think that that's something that people don't look at because again, you're not taught to think like that. You're not taught how to, to build out structures and, 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 and things of that sort. But like legit, like this is how, charter schools and community organizations start, right? Like, yo, I, I consistently had a hundred kids and they brought the next group and like, now, now you got a middle school, <laughs> you, you, you know? I mean, certainly a lot of funding uh, goes with that. Um, but this is the start, you know, and if you, and if you could show somebody that I have a tight knit organization yep. that can show promise, uh, I think they'll find a way to fund it properly, depending on whatever that return on investment for them might be. Dude, so let's let's jump hard on a, a theme that connects, I think, all of these things together. So we talked about 
vacant lots. We talked about your early career. We talked about mm -hmm. seeing the lines of connection. We talked about listening to peers that knew more about money. We talked about passing this down, you know, going for grants, moving from this free mentality to understanding funding mechanisms, realizing that it wasn't as admirable to do it alone and needing help and support and building sustainability, making mistakes. So let's, let's, I really think this is so important, man. So many people want it now mm -hmm. and they don't want to put in the time, the energy, the effort, the like heart to build something, not realizing that the only way you build something is like, use these things over and over and over. So I'm, I'm watching peers, people older than me, younger than me, that are just like, oh, dude, that looks like it was a piece of cake. Or like, dang, that happened fast. And we've been doing this five years. <laughs> it's right. not right. overnight. So what's, what do you think about the, the time it takes to, to build these things and the commitment needed? So I'm a big person on time, right? Like I, I, I am certainly anti-waste time if 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 you can i think that and here's the thing you know we could be in our 30s and not be where we want to be but if you know that when you're 30 you definitely and, and you, by the time you're 30 you kind of know how the world works right for the most part so you're like i got to make sure that at 40 i'm not like this so i'm putting in whatever i'm taking the chances um and so even now i, I don't know if me and you spoke i don't know last time you spoke but like 2020 is kind of going, I mean, certainly a, a, a few hiccups that I weren't, weren't expecting, but for the most part, it's kind of going the way I wanted it to go. Like this, this year, I wanted to take a step back from spending, to take a step back, you know, to kind of uh, take my lifestyle down a little bit. I wanted this to be a grind year. This pandemic, though it's super unfortunate, you know, certainly for the businesses involved, and mine's, mine's one, is one of them. Um, <laughs> And uh, other things, you know, school, you know, I'm dealing with my daughter and th things of that sort. But it's placed me right where I wanted to be as far as like with the grinding, with the saving money, you know, the not worrying about what's happening outside, not worrying about keeping up on vacations and, and, th and things of that sort. Um, but again, 2020 was to set up 2021 or 2022, maybe even 2030, right? So it's like you have like, Everything seems like it's coming so fast, but like you have to take time out and just invest in yourself and invest in what you think is important. Um, midway through a book, I don't know if you've read it, um, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. Have you heard of that? I have not. Sounds great. Great book. And one of it is like, listen, you have to spend at least 10 minutes. I see you writing that down. Go ahead, man. It's just free jewels. <laughs> you have to spend 10 minutes a day on yourself. Like you just, you just have to. And I think 10 minutes, you know, starting with 10 minutes, eventually go to 30, an hour, I don't know. I haven't got that far in the book yet. But the premise is like, to the, like, like it sounds so silly for someone to say, I don't, I can't even find 10 minutes out of the day for myself. It's like crazy, you know, like you would have to compare that to someone driving and they're like, I'm so busy driving, I can't stop for gas. You know? <laughs> like, like eventually, it's going to catch up with you. You have to take time out and plan your life, plan um, the, that investment into yourself, whether that's monetary, whether that's fit, whether that's physical fitness, whether that's uh, meditation, religion, whatever it is that, that you do, right? You have to put that time back, back into yourself. You can't just live every day, just living every day. Life certainly is going to teach you a lesson all within itself, but you got to invest that time back into yourself. I don't know if I answered your original question, but I think it was great though. What, you know, you've got a young daughter. So mm -hmm. through this, you've probably had to be very focused on her education and her needs. Mm -hmm. But what are some ways that you're still finding to invest in yourself? Obviously reading is one. Yeah. So re re reading is one. I haven't stopped working out now. Certainly I'm going to the, I'm not going to the gym a, a, as much, but I'm making sure that, you know, I'm, you know, fighting Trump. I am listening to, uh, uh, I'm listening to more uh, audio books is kind of my new thing, right? Because again, when I'm riding my bike, when I'm going for a jog, I kind of knock out multiple birds with, with one stone. Um, I have taken advantage of some of those uh, free free classes and courses that have been offered online. In fact, 
the shameless plug, um, Orders Academy had something going on, I say maybe about a month or two, two ago. Um, and I don't remember if it was free or if it was for a fee, but nevertheless, I certainly looked into a lot of things that were going on on that site and just, just catching up and brushing up and making sure that I'm, you know, above the curve or right there with, with all types of innovation that's happening in my field and even for things that I, that I want to get better at. I, I just actually signed up, and I think I'm a fairly good public speaker, but I just signed up for a Toastmasters class nice. about, three, about three weeks ago. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Always thinking about ways that, like, yo, you got to stay sharp. Yep. You, 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 ha you have to stay sharp. Um, and, and, and the thing is, though that might be a real thing as well, it's not even in comparison to others. A lot of people, really? other people make you want to stay sharp. And I don't necessarily see that, not from a competition aspect, at, at least, but I'm like, I just have to be better and better than I was last year. I don't want to be stagnant. And I know that sometimes it happens. Sometimes you're like, yo, I didn't. I only had very little amount of progress, but I'm always trying to invest in myself. You know, talks like these, talking to friends like yourself, you know, uh, it's not, you know, we don't talk all the time, but when we do, we typically pass off some good jewels to, 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 to each other. And so, so th those are the things that, that I've been doing. Because again, got nothing but time. So like to those people who like had all these excuses, you got nothing but time, dude. I know. Well, and dude, the, the cool part about this pandemic has been, you know, to your point, it's focused us mm -hmm. so incredibly on, look, you, the one thing that you have control over right now, you're going to be in your, in your desk, <laughs> like in your living room right. for the next 16 hours today, which, right. what's the day going to be about to you? Are you going to, mm -hmm. are you going to lift, read, you know, take a course and learn about public speaking, or are you going to play Call of Duty and World of Warcraft Fortnite. or Nine, yeah. <laughs> Fortnite for, yeah. for nine hours and look I got nothing wrong with you know take a break and, and play and, and escape you know I'm totally cool with that if while you say that sentence you're not also telling me that you want to be up there and you want to you know you want to create something right it just it has to match right. and I also feel really fortunate I mean th this has definitely been a blow for the businesses but it has also forced us to, to innovate, to change, to evolve, to adapt. And there, there's some beauty there, man. It, 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 it is. And, and even me, like I'm, I'm kicking myself, you know, in, in, in the rear end for, for there were some ideas that I had that I know would have came in gigantically right now, you, you know, uh, but again, you never know what the future is going to hold. And then though some of us who had our posts on finances, um, we felt like it was going to be a market correction. We felt like, you know, maybe some things were going to change. We didn't know it was going to be like this. <laughs> right. so, so it's like, even, even to right now, like what we're doing, like, like with Zoom. Um, and I know like you guys have created an online community. I was on the way towards creating something like that. It had I already had that in place right now, then maybe I wouldn't have missed a beat. Right. And again, I think that's a bigger thing too. It's like, listen, if you got the ideas, go, go through it. Yep. You, you know, because you never know when it's going to come to fruition. It could change your life. You know, uh, you know what I was thinking in November could have put me at the top of the top. Whatever you know, before people were talking about Zoom or online teaching things like that. Certainly now, um, this is going to be a part of us for a long time. Even if things did get back to right. you know, normal, this is going to be a thing. So um, again, trying to stay ahead of that curve, but also trying to stay sharp. Um, and, and in that same token, you know, because you mentioned Zoe, um, it's like, how do I keep my daughter engaged, right? Because if I feel like, you know, maybe I'm teaching a little differently than a, a regular school teacher would, how am I also make, making her not fall victim into, you know, watching YouTube all day or Disney Plus, whatever it is that, that yep. she wants to do. So also keeping her engaged and making her mind still go. And, and, and But closing out the outdoors, it's tough. It's tough. You know, closing out the outdoors is, is tough, especially if you're not at a a big house with a lawn and, you know, like if you're in an apartment or you're, you know, in, in most cities, if you're staying in a house, you, you really are limited with the type of things that you're able to do. So again, trying to be creative, innovative, things like that, um, they matter. Well, from, from what I see on the outside, man, I, I, I feel 
like watching you communicate with her is is incredible. It's really neat to see her personality shine and, and the way you two interact. Like it is is very inspirational for me. I don't I don't have any kids, but it's yeah. really special. Yeah. And I think uh, to use our, our magic buzzword again, it's very admirable to see the way that you're mastering not only yourself and your time, but the way you're influencing others and the way that that she is also a big part of that. So, dude, I think you got a lot to be very proud of. Oh, man, I appreciate that. I appreciate the love, man. I, I, I really thank you. And that's, that, that feels good to hear for sure. All right. So if you're listening in, uh, we've talked everything, but I think the, the punchline behind all of this, you know, was really about making sure that you start early, making sure that while you're young, you take the risk, you make the investments into your future. It doesn't need to be with money. It could be with businesses or relationships, but making sure you do that. Um, and then learning how to build organizations, um, how to build impact by, you know, making them making the mistakes and committing and building some time in to learn. So dude, you've left us with some, some absolute gems today. I'm so, so grateful. No, I, I, I appreciate you. I appreciate everything you're doing at your company. Uh, I see the money matters shirt. I, I, I am a little, uh, I'm a little jealous because somehow that didn't pass over to, 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 to my residents. I'm not sure how I got skipped over with the shirts. You wear a medium. Yeah, I do. I do. Oh, this, this might have to happen. I, I, might, yeah. I might have to make that happen. <laughs> yeah, nah, nah, definitely. I want, I want to represent, man. But, but as always, man, you're certainly uh, not only uh, a good friend of mine, you're also someone that, that motivates and inspires me, even though we're only a, um, I don't know, a, a, state or two, a state or two away. Um, I'm always looking, I'll, I'll always like to see what you're doing uh, personally, professionally, socially. Um, and I think that you are certainly leading the way to others like you, under you, who aspire to be you and more. And, and I think that that's evidence as, you know, it's been at least two times that you've even came to Philly and spoke to my, to, 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 to my students. And each time they get something away from it, you know, they see, and I know that this is a, is a financial podcast, but uh, I think that from my aspect, even like the social responsibility, I think that you have a very good sense of, who you are and how you can help in neighborhoods that you work with, neighborhoods that you want to work with and, and things of that forth. So to state the obvious, being a, 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 a white male in, in America, I think that you do understand uh, certain privileges that, that you're privy to and that, you know, you try to give that back and help where you can and, you know, all uh, essentially um, break down these barriers that have been placed on people of uh, black and brown skin complexions and, minorities and so and I, I and I don't mean to get you know philosophical on you but I do think that it's important to let friends or let anyone know like yo dog I appreciate you and I, I appreciate what you do and certainly I, I know that you'll do more and we're going to take this thing and go and go 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 to uh where, where did Tesla just go did they just go to the who knows man the moon <laughs> Mars yeah or somewhere <laughs> we, we going up there eventually you know what I mean but yeah man you, you are appreciated for sure Chris, that means a lot to me, man. I still have a lot to learn and, and working on it, but we're going to do a lot of good together. So thank you for no being doubt. here. Um, and as soon as this is live, we'll share it with you. But if you're, if you're tuned in, man, uh, check out Chris, Chris Banks at Thanksgiving. They're up in Philly. Uh, it's a great organization. So if you've got kids or just want to get a little more familiar with money, his organization is the stop, the place, the spot to go for that. And um, where, can, where can they reach you? How can they find you? Certainly. So on Instagram, right, let's start with the company first. On, on Instagram, it's at Banks Giving Company, B-A-N-K-S-G-I-V-I-N-G-C-O-M-P-A-N-Y on Instagram. It's also Banks Giving on Facebook. Our website, www.banksgiving.org. We just made some updates too. Check it out. Uh, and me personally, um, you can reach my, my, my personal Instagram is Broad Street Banks. That's B-R-O-A-D-S-T. B -A -N -K -S, and you can reach me by email as well, banks at banksgiving.org. Uh, we're in Philadelphia, uh, traveling as well. Certainly, we'll be doing a lot of Zoom uh, networking and Zoom meetings for, for, for young adults coming soon. And I just appreciate the platform again, man. And thanks for having me. Dude, so glad you're here, man.